Okay, this is the video on Russell's paradox. Okay, so I'm gonna describe a little bit of logic because in order to prove the importance of well, in order to demonstrate the importance of Russell's paradox, you need to know a little bit of logic. So Okay, so what we're going to be looking at is the axiom of unrestricted comprehension, which is a possible axiom you could choose to develop set theory. And it was implicitly used in the original non-axiomatic form, formula, non-axiomatic treatment of set theory due to Cantor and I guess like elaborated on by Frege. So, so essentially what the axiom of unrestricted comprehension states is that every predicate, essentially a condition, determines a set. So this seems quite intuitive in the sense that we could say uh, x is green, so therefore there exists a set of all green things but it turns out in terms of mathematics this axiom is incoherent so it results in a paradox okay so another slightly more symbolic way of stating the axiom is if p of x is a predicate then there exists a set x such that set of all x such that p of x is true. This is set builder notation. Here, there is no implicit set which x is already a member of. Okay. So, the first logical concept I need to demonstrate is the principle of explosion. So, this tells us why we don't want contradictions within our formal system. So, we're going to first talk about a few valid uh, logical steps you can take within an argument. So, the first is called conjunction elimination. So, what it essentially states, if you have A and B, and you know that A and B is true, where A and B are logical formulas so they they may be a group of they may be several statements not just single statements linked together by logical connectors we may deduce a and we can also deduce b so essentially it just says that when a and b is true a is true and B is true. So that's pretty intuitive. The next concept is called disjunction introduction. So if we have a statement A and we know that A is true, we may append to A any other statement with disjunction or inclusive or. So or where we have A or B and that includes the case where A and B are both true so if we have A and we know A is true then we can conclude A or B for any B this makes sense because A is true so therefore one of the disjuncts is true, hence the whole disjunction must be true. Okay? The next concept is called a disjunctive syllogism. So if we have A or B as true, and we know not B, we can conclude A. This makes a lot of sense. This is the negation symbol. So, if A or B is true, 
then either A is B, A is true, or B is true, or they're both true. In the case where B is false, since this disjunction is true, one of them has to be true, therefore A is true. The final uh, logical concept is called conditional proof. And what that states is that if we've got a series of statements starting with A moving down to C where C is dependent on A so we've somehow deduced C from A we may conclude that A implies C A implies C. Again, this is called conditional proof. You can look up all of these concepts on Wikipedia or a lot of places. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. These are all standard uh, one-step arguments that you can make during a proof in the propositional logic or propositional calculus. Of course, there's other equivalent sets of rules, and they will also imply the principle of explosion. Okay, so let's prove the principle of explosion. So the principle of explosion states that any contradiction, any statement of the form A and not A, implies any other statement, any other arbitrary statement. So essentially, A and not A can imply, implies B, where B may have no relation to A, no relation at all, and may not even have occurred anywhere in the proof. So the reason we want to avoid this is because it would make our formal system trivial in the sense that every statement would be true. So we call a system which contains contradictions inconsistent, and we don't really want that. Okay. That's also what I meant by incoherent when I was describing the axiom of unrestricted comprehension. Okay. Cool. So prove the principle of explosion. So assume... So assume... Is it? Assume A and not A. Therefore, we can conclude, for example, hmm, we can conclude both A and not A. So we get A, get not A. This is obviously not the regular notation, but I'm just trying to get give you an intuition into why this is true. Okay. A not A. Then by the dis by disjunction introduction, we may append to either of these statements, doesn't really matter which, a any other statement. So let's append to a, B, so by disjunctive introduction, A or B, that makes sense? So we know this is true, but we also know that not A is true, therefore A is false, but the disjunctive this disjunction is true hence B must be true so I'll just run this out so we've reached B now the final step which is conditional proof since we started with A 
and not A, and we derive B, we may assert A and not A implies B. There you go. That's the principle of explosion. Okay, now that we know that, let's show that the axiom of unrestricted comprehension is incoherent. So this is quite simple, uh, but like, it's quite simple to show symbolically, but sort of understanding what is going on is a bit more difficult. So one thing we want to note is that the set theory that we're dealing with here is called a pure set theory in that every object within the theory is a set. So in the standard foundations that are used today, which is called ZFC, everything is built from the empty set or an assumed infinite set. So you can also derive the empty set from the infinite set. So you don't necessarily need to assume the infinite set, but you, so you don't need to assume the empty set, but in general it is. Okay. So everything we're talking about here, all the variables represent sets. So, the, the, the basic concept in set theory is membership. So we write x element A to say that x is an, x is an element of A, or equivalently, x is a member of A. Or the other way around, A contains x. So the predicate which we're going to use to find a contradiction is essentially we just use negation and the membership relation. So we say not x element x. So this we're going to call p. So now, by the axiom of unrestricted comprehension, we deduce that there is a set of all x such that x is not an element of x. This is a bit strange <laughs> when you first encounter it, but I think it makes a lot of sense that you would start negating the only relation you have you've started with. So makes sense. So now we've got this set. Let's call that set R uh, in honor of Russell, Bertrand Russell, who developed type theory and did work in set theory to try to avoid paradoxes like this. He sent a letter to Frege. Frege had just developed a predicate logic, which is a way of reasoning about uh, essentially predicates and quantifying over predicates. And Frege had, in, had used this axiom of unrestricted comprehension in his work. So when Russell sent him the letter, uh, he was about to publish his work, so he put in the appendix that the whole system was actually uh, trivial or incoherent because of this paradox. Okay. So the paradox comes where we ask, when we ask the question, R element R? <laughs> So let's put it a little bit more rigorously. So we say R element R or R not 
that represents this not element R. So that's interesting. So just intuitively, if R is an element of R, then by the definition of R, if we plug R in here, R is not an element of R. <laughs> now if R is an now if R is not an element of R, if we plug R into the definition, well, if R is not an element of R, R satisfies the definition, hence R is an element of R. Which means it's a con which is a contradiction. And we've reached a contradiction from both the left hand and the right hand side of this disjunction, the OR statement. So since it can only be one or the other, well, that's what Russell's paradox is. We have shown that the axiom of unrestricted comprehension is incoherent. So to write it a bit more symbolically, <laughs> R element R is biconditional if and only if R is not an element of R. I think that makes the contradiction a lot more obvious. So essentially we now have to blame some part of our formal system and what is usually done is they blame the axiom of unrestricted comprehension and so they change it a little bit they create a new axiom called the axiom of restricted comprehension which avoids this paradox as far as we're aware <laughs> okay so the axiom of restricted comprehension just states that there must be some implicit set that X is already an element of. So essentially what that means is that we can only create new sets via predicates when we're we can only create new sets via predicates when they are subsets of previously constructed sets. So, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Hope you enjoyed it.